Hello, everyone, and welcome to another 10-minute Tech Talk Thursday with me, Michael Weir, your Fortinet NC7 Certified Technical Account Manager for Fortinet here at Inger Micro. The topic we're talking about today is going to be zero trust access. Now, zero trust access is all about protecting your edges. So the question is, which edges do you protect in your business or your home? Let's talk about it happening. We're breached because their Wi-Fi connected coffee maker. Now, some of you might be kind of snickering in your head to think out a coffee maker. What does that have to do with a breach? Well, there's actually been a lot of research, strangely, around coffee makers and their implications on network security. And you can read studies about people introducing malware for them, ransomware them, or even making them make coffee for no reason. There's a potentially apocryphal story on Reddit, supposedly written by the engineer of a, a company that had a large air-gapped industrial network and then a, your usual corporate Wi-Fi that had access to the internet. And they had an internet-connected coffee maker, and somehow the way it was hooked up was wrong, and it bridged the two networks, and the uh, bad actors were able to use that coffee maker as a pivot point to get into and ransomware some of the industrial network. So never underestimate your coffee maker. They're looking for us. Anyway, the problem is that you have more devices on your network in more places than ever before, which is creating more edges than ever before. And the solution is to implement zero trust access to protect everything everywhere. Now, just to make sure we're clear on the vocabulary, we do have to clear up a little thing here. Zero trust isn't really zero because then it would be impossible to function. It really, for a functional perspective, it means the minimum possible trust where you can still get done what it is that you need to get done. Uh, the zero comes from the fact that everything is automatically distrusted until proven otherwise. And even when you're trusted, you're going to get as little access as possible in order to be able to function and do what it is you need to do. And then we're going to look at trust as it extends beyond the traditional WAN edge. Well, what are we talking about in traditional WAN edge? This is what your traditional WAN edge structure would look like in the minds of many a corporate engineer right now. We've got the connection to the internet, we've got our corporate devices. Corporate devices are vetted and controlled. Corporate connection to the internet goes through a firewall. I wish I could say the majority had a firewall, but I think I'm safe to say the plurality have a firewall now. And this is the edges people used to think about. And people continue to think about them. These are some statistics on breaches per year. So you'll notice that things are pretty even until 2020, the year of the breach. And of course, you'll hear people say, well, that's just because everybody moved to work from home. Well, a breach is a breach. It doesn't matter how it got in there. It doesn't matter if it got in there from your coffee maker. It's still a breach. Working from home doesn't mean these breaches don't mean anything. It's because we have all these new edges. So we talked about the top middle one working from home, that that's a new edge. But there's also your travel worker. This is people on the road using public Wi-Fi or people bringing in their own devices, BYOD, onto your network. There's your cloud, of course, SaaS, IS, PaaS, storage, workloads, apps, whatever you want. Everything's in the cloud these days. Everybody's got something up there. There's your operational technology, your OT and your ICS. These are things in your network that don't speak IP protocols. Could be anything from an industrial facility to, say, a temperature, an old temperature sensor in a college cafeteria or something like that, like where I worked when I was in college. There's your IoT, which is your headless or semi-headless devices, like the coffee maker. And then, of course, there's the question of the network on a whole, which is, did any of it spread over the network? The question then is, how do we protect ourselves from it all? Each of these is an edge. And the answer to that is going to be more than one layer of protection. So I'm going to talk about some of the common techniques and technologies used to do protection here. Obviously, what I'm saying isn't encyclical, but I also want to say that not everyone needs every one of the things that I'm going to talk about. This is just an overview of potential technologies you could use. We'll talk about a specific use case afterwards. So. One's almost everybody knows about your firewall and your VPN. Firewalls are good because they protect everything behind them, obviously. Some of them can apply DLP. And there are firewalls out there from certain manufacturers, Fortnite being one of them, that can work on your OT and ICS and IoT non-IP protocols. They can scan those, too, as part of their application filtering. But the obvious downsides to a firewall is, though it protects your networks, clients, and resources behind it, it only acts on those. It doesn't act on things in front of it other than to block them if they try to get in. It doesn't protect clouds or remote workers any more than they are behind the firewall. And of course, it rarely uses any kind of identity to log on. Some people have some integrations there. Really more should, but that's a different subject. VPN is a normal companion to firewall because it varies, verifies the identity on connection. It encrypts data in motion, and it gives the endpoint client some of the protections of being behind the firewall of the traffic that's going on over the VPN. 
But the thing is, it doesn't protect the whole device. It just protects the traffic going over the VPN. Everything else is still an open WAN edge there. It verifies that entity once when you log on. Uh, it also doesn't protect from infected endpoints logging on unless you've got some kind of posture control there. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. And, of course, you're not going to get any OT, uh, ICS, or IoT devices VPNing in, at least at this point. Who knows what will happen 10 years from now. Another common technology, and we're kind of going down in terms of how common they are, so almost everybody's got firewalls and VPN. Next would be a NAC, a network access controller. Now, I'm not talking about the old things that just controlled authentication and VLAN steering. I'm talking about a, mo a modern one that can you know, sense behaviors and you know, be preset to put things into groups based on this, that, and the other uh, you know, identity, not just you know, using, uh, you know, this is my old radius server or something like that. But the good news about a NAC is that it identifies most devices in a network, and that includes devices connecting over VPN, because when you're over VPN, you're in the network. It'll verify identities, uh, it'll protect against BYOD, because that's still a device in the network and can still be classified based on its attributes, even though you don't own it. And a good NAC can change these classifications based on behavior criteria while a device is on there. It's not just on there to be on there. If it starts doing something that breaks a rule or it changes its properties, it can be moved to a new place. The bad thing about a NAC is there's no data protection in it. It's protecting your network and from devices and devices from each other and you know things along those lines. But the data itself, there's no encryption or anything else. This is just uh, devices and their behaviors. And once again, it doesn't protect devices off the network, much like the VPN and the firewall. It only works if you're on the same network as it is. Next up, your CWP, your Cloud Workload Protection. So this focuses not so much on the end devices, like we've talked about the last couple of times here, but on what you have in the cloud itself. Uh, a good thing about a CWP, a good CWP, is it's going to verify identities on connection. It's going to protect your data in motion and at rest. It's going to enforce compliance. And it protects what's in the cloud no matter where the access is from. The, the bad things about it is it only verifies your identity once, typically speaking. It only protects traffic going to and from your IS or past clouds, your storage apps, whatever it is you have up there. Um, it doesn't pay attention to the rest of network traffic. It's just this is this little segment we're looking at. And it's definitely a very valuable edge to protect because a lot of people have that edge and it's very vulnerable these days. But that's all it's going to protect. Now, same way CWP will protect your PaaS and IS, we need to talk about CASB to protect your SAS. Now, CASB, uh, these days, almost nothing is just a CASB anymore. They also include things like cloud posture assessments and data protection and that kind of thing. But Cloud Access Security Broker is what that actually stands for. So the good about it is it verifies your identity on connection. It protects data in motion and enforces compliance. can even enforce data loss protection and that sort of thing to and from SAS. The bad side to it is it only verifies that in any once and only protects traffic to and from a SaaS cloud. It's not protecting anything else on the network. Once again, this is a very important edge. It's a very vulnerable edge, but you're still just protecting one edge with it. And then the last thing we're going to talk about today is the SASE. SASE is your secure access services edge. So SASE is still kind of evening out from an industry perspective what exactly constitutes a SASE. You're going to see people using the term for, for you know, things that have nowhere near as much functionality as other people using the term have, kind of like EDR sometimes these days. So the good things about it is you, um, you're going to have a firewall, secure web gateway, DNS filtering, other protections wherever the endpoint is. And since it's on the endpoint itself, it can continuously access the secure connectivity through that endpoint, and good ones can incorporate data loss protection. So this is going to protect your client wherever it goes, but it only can protect uh, clients on which it is installed, right? So you got no BYOD protection, no OT, ICS, IoT protection, headless protection, that kind of thing. Is SASE kind of like the, the silver bullet of zero trust network access? It, it's, I mean, it's close. It's getting there. But this is what you need to do. You need to choose the parts of it that fit your situation. Don't try to save money in protection only to spend more on the cure. So it's going to cost you a lot more money to recover from a breach than it is to prevent the breach in the first place, even if it looks like preventing the breach is expensive. Uh, run the numbers, I assure you that's how it's going to work out. But either way, let's see it in action. We're just going to talk about one scenario here now. With all the edges we've talked about, obviously there's a million different scenarios we could go into for this, that, and the other threat. But we're going to keep it simple and just talk about one guy here. And this is on the road, Randy, connecting from public Wi-Fi back to the office into a box in the cloud where you drop things. Now, 
I can't say the name of what that is. I don't believe I'm allowed to, but I'm hoping that the name of this dropping box you have figured out on your own. So he is first sending stuff to the office, and the stuff in the office is being protected from this data theft by the VPN. Everything's encrypted. Anything that comes across is just gobbledygook. There's nothing you're going to be able to read there. I'm hoping in this day and age of work from home, work from anywhere, everybody's got a VPN rolled out. So that's protected. But what about the data going to and from the cloud? There's no protection here if we've only got a VPN on. So that's a place where somebody could hop in the middle and start taking things out. Well, if we have a good CASB running with an API connection, not just as a proxy, then that data is protected too. So now this data theft is not occurring. Well, out, we're blocked. Number two, data loss. So data loss, let's say these uh, things are being sent up into the cloud to be dropped in the box thing, and there's no protection. Once again, hey, this is easy to pick off. Boop, 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 boop. So what are we going to do? We're going to do the same thing. We're going to block it with a CASB, secure API connection. Not just a proxy. I know I've said it a couple of times. If you want to look on the internet and research what the difference is, I encourage you to. But just know APIs are better than proxies in this case. We're protected there by our CASB, but what about over the WAN? Right? We had that pre-existing CASB from our previous problem, but now we have data loss over the WAN, a problem for which we don't have a solution yet. That's where we're throwing a sassy. Right? This is where we're going to have protection on that endpoint. That's going to look for things like data loss, originating from the endpoint, not from anywhere else. So you've got safety there. Then problem number three is good old Randy returns to the office. So now Randy's in the office. He's directly connected to the office LAN. He is behind the office firewall. So those dotted lines are, you know, how, how things, just like in the other ones, how data is running from a logical perspective. But good old Randy has returned infected. So what's going to happen now? No protection. This is going to start spreading all over the place. It's going to go all throughout their network. You might even become a site that is broadcasting more malware out to other places. How do we fix that? Well, we throw on a knack that says, hey, Randy, you appear to be infected. You're misbehaving. We're going to cut you off, put you in a quarantine VLAN, give you a little notification saying, hey, go talk to tech services. Thanks for coming back infected. And there you have it. Randy's three problems have been solved by protection for these edges. So our call to action is very easy here. It's protect all your edges of zero trust access. Plain and simple, right? There's only a billion new things with 100,000 new products for them. You know what? If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. There you have my work email, my work phone number. I welcome all your problems, questions, concerns, issues you wish to raise, any tweaks you want to see in this video or future videos. Just let me know. Other than that, you all have yourselves a good day.